Hey, what's up rugby fans? It's me, not Willie Hines. I hope you've had a great weekend and enjoyed all the rugby that's been on show. Obviously, you're not gonna be smiling unless you're an Ireland fan. Across the board, they've had a great weekend of Six Nations rugby. Of course, there's positives to take from all the games. I'm here to specifically focus on the Red Roses match against France that took place today in Powell and what a game it was. You have to say, every time England and France play each other, no matter what competition, no matter where in the world, it is going to be exciting and it's gonna be an absolute cracker. And it was no different today. So I'm here to talk about three things that I think were the main difference today, things that need to be improved upon from Simon Middleton and his players for the next game in Scotland. So, on to the first one, and they all start with S. So the first one is scrums. England are great at lineouts and scrums. We know this, it's a key component of their play. The lineouts today were really, really good, and we saw that because England scored directly off of one. But there was a real issue with the scrums today. And I think part of that reason is particularly with the players that are out. If you look at that quality, England have it in abundance, not just in the starting 15, but in players that have been called up over the last sort of 12 months or so. But it was quite evident today that the likes of Abby Scott and Kath O'Donnell were missing and they were missed today. Um, what does that mean? Well, you know, Zoe Allcroft had a really good game. She was great in the Autumn Internationals, thoroughly deserved her call up for this Six Nations. But aside from that, I don't personally feel like Poppy Cleal is best utilised in that second row position. She's much better at ball carrying, at breaks from the back of the scrum. She's a big, powerful player. And I think having her right in the middle of that scrum doesn't do it any favors. Shauna Brown was another one. She is one that we've been harping on that she gets an England start. However, I don't think today she was as good as she has been in a Red Roses or certainly in a Harlequins shirt. I guess that leads us on to the next S, selection. Now obviously mentioned Shauna Brown and Sarah Byrne there, and I think it probably would have been best if Byrne started. In a game like this, you need to have your big ball carriers smashing that defence, tiring the French out, so that maybe for the last 20 or 30 minutes you bring Shauna Brown on, another powerful player, but perhaps not as strong a runner, and you utilise her towards the end of the game. So that's one area that I think Simon Milson probably will look at for his next fixture. But also, look at scrum half, another S, scrum half. Now, we all know how good Sansu was today. She was unbelievable. She's that kind of player that can make something happen from nothing. Now, you have a few options to counteract that. You can fight fire with fire, and that looks like what Simon Mendelssohn did today with starting Mo Hunt. Mo Hunt is the kind of player that can make magic happen from almost nothing. But, Personally, I feel it would have been better today to start Leanne Riley. Think of it a little bit like, and not comparing it to the men's game, but to use an example, think of it a little bit like uh, Youngs and Care. Danny Care is the kind of player who's exciting, who you bring off the bench in the last 20 to 30 minutes, and when players are tiring and attack those gaps and attack the space. That's what Sansu was doing the whole game, and you need to counteract that. You need a scrum half who is strong defensively and who can really get in their face, control the game from an England perspective, less on an attacking side, which is what Mohan is so good at, where she's great at just going on her own, but also defensively as well and controlling the play, controlling the play around your uh, the, the set piece um, and the breakdown as well. And that's why I think Leanne Riley probably should have started today. And also elsewhere, you know, I've said it before and I'll say it again, Zoe Harrison is a quality fly half, but that is just it. She is a number 10. We saw that when Amber Reed came on, who's a natural centre, look what she did. She set up Emily Scarrett's try to perfection. She's a natural centre. England don't have a lot of uh, depth in that position, certainly not with the likes of uh, Lange Tuima, who's out injured um, and Hurd, who, who has been selected in the England shirt before, 
Uh, Millie Wood, who's obviously in, in the squad. Rachel Burford's not involved at the moment. So there's not a lot of depth there and England need to lock in that 12, that 10, 12, 13 positions Certainly before, definitely before the, the, the World Cup next year, but they've got a whole Six Nations tournament and also some internationals in the meantime, and maybe even a tournament in the summer as well. So that was point number two. And point number three, security. Security specifically around the breakdowns. What does that mean? Well, you look at what happened today. France attacked a lot of England space in between that, the, the gaps in between the rocks and the malls. It happened a lot, especially with uh, Sansouci's try, where um, her maid picked the ball up and, and she, there, was a, there were big gaps around a lot of England's rucking, uh, uh, well, not so much with the mall, obviously, but certainly with, around the rucks and around that breakdown, whether it be that dog-legged defence where some players were going forward and, and some players were hanging back and it left that gap for plen French players to run through, or even if they just weren't setting themselves properly around the rucks and malls. That's definitely something that they need to work on, shore up that defence and make sure that they're not as leaky. Look... This wasn't the worst performance in the world, so I'm not slamming England by any means. It was a difficult away game. The atmosphere in France certainly made it feel like uh, they were playing against 100 players, forget 15. England and France is a great fixture, and it's fantastic to see the Red Roses come out triumphant. But it's it wasn't a vintage performance, and it's games like these that you kind of need, you need to reset yourself, you need to look inside yourselves to see that you're not, you know, England are one of the best sides in the world, but you can see that there are gaps there and, and there are moments there that they were hanging on and hanging on and they got lucky in a few instances. Yes, they played very well. Yes, a lot of their defence was impressive. And of course, when you've got the likes of Emily Scarrett making those incredible runs, we saw Sarah Byrne, making those runs, she got a try disallowed, rightly so. That you've got players who are very, very talented across the board. I'm not saying that there are any England players that didn't perform well today. Sarah Beckett was all over the place. She was fantastic. When you've got players out, the likes of Marley Packer, Abby Scott, Kath O'Donnell, and the likes, it's gonna, it's gonna affect a side, understandably. And he's got some young players coming through. There are some young players who perhaps haven't been called up. They're definitely good enough to be playing. So it's not doom and gloom. Please don't think that I'm making it all doom and gloom. This is just uh, three points that I picked up, which I believe England need to work on and need to look at before their next game. But look, it's the first game in the Six Nations. There's plenty to play for, of course, now, this tournament is England's to lose. So the best thing to do, I would say, for Simon Middleton's side is to A, look at those positions where we're not as strong in depth. B, look at those combinations, those individual positions that perhaps young players can come in and get those reps, get that experience. And also finally, just tidy up those small points and oh, England are going to be a threat for the rest of this tournament, for whatever tournament may come up in the summer, for the Autumn Internationals and, of course, for next year, the Six Nations and the Women's World Cup. So, folks, thank you very much for watching. As always, it's been a pleasure. If you're new to the channel, thanks for pressing play. Do make sure you do all of this because we've got tons of stuff that's going to be coming up in the next week. If you haven't checked out any of our old videos, I'm going to leave some time at the end for you to click on one of our previous ones. And we will see you very, very soon where no doubt we're going to bring you some more top class exclusive women's rugby coverage. See you soon. Have a good week. Bye.